Hello guys, welcome to this new video. I hope you are doing good. Today we are going to solve two problems related to piping concept. Piping is a concept in JavaScript in which either we pass a value through multiple functions or in an object we can have multiple functions and to that we can pass the same values and we can get the result and store it. For example, on the screen you see the first piping problem here. I have an object with the key salary and value 10,000. Then there are these three functions. So the first function take which is get salary, it takes the value and it returns the person's salary. The second function adds bonus to that. So we get the net salary. The value returned by get salary is passed to this add bonus and we add 1000 to it as a bonus and after that there is a deduct tax so this takes the gross salary which is we receive after adding the bonus and then it it uh, calculates the tax and it returns the final sum so here you see that in the result we have this pipe function the pipe function accepts the multiple function argument and the value this value has to be passed through all these functions and then we have to print the final result. So we have to create this pipe function. Let's start implementing this. As you can see the pipe function there is a one function call and after that there is another function call. That means the first function that will create it will accept the, all the functions or a, a number of functions and then that function will return another function that will accept the object or the value and finally this second function will return us the result. So once you see the problem statement try to break that down by uh, seeing the structure and then accordingly we are going to implement the solution. So let's create pipe and here the because the first function is going to accept the list of functions so it can be any number of arguments we are not sure about that that's why we are using the rest operator here to aggregate the function in a form of an array so this will return us the function in form of an array now as you can see in the problem statement there is a one function call after that there is another function call that means the first function when invoked it return another function so let's create this another function now you can create a name or anonymous function here I am creating anonymous function because I don't want I don't have to invoke this function anytime further so in case you want to recursively invoke this function in future you have to create a named function and store it in a variable or somewhere else so here because I don't want to invoke it any further or make a further recursive calls I am creating an anonymous function this will accept the value okay so the value will be accepted by this return function now here because this rest operator returns us an array of functions what we are doing is i'm going to run a for each loop on that and this will return me a single function now to this single function what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass the current value so because it's a piping process right the result of first function will be passed to the second function as an argument. The result of second function will be passed as an argument to the third function. So that's how piping works. It's like a piping or funnel where the first result is passed to the consecutive second function. That's why here I am passing the value to this function and its result. Whatever this function will provide me to the result that will be stored again to the value so that once this for each loop runs again again the same thing happens the previous data will be passed to the function and the new data will be stored ultimately we will be having the final result that will come from the last function call so we have the final result that's it this result will be returned so i think that's how you can implement this piping function if i click on run you see that we get the result 7700 so initially the value was 10,000 after that we added a bonus of 1000 to it that becomes 11,000 and then we have detected a 30% from the 11,000 and we got the final result as 
7700. So our piping function is working perfectly fine. So this is one example of pipe. You can expect this for HD1 and HD2 in the first coding round. Now let's move to the second piping question. So as you can see over here, we have a structure, another piping example. Here you see we have an object and this object contains nested keys and these nested keys have functions that perform a calculation. Now we have to create this pipe function that will accept this object and the arguments in the second call, these arguments will be passed to these functions and whatever will be the calculation that will be assigned as a value to this key. Basically, the arguments that we will receive in the pipe function, we have to pass down to these functions and after the calculation, whatever these functions are returning, we have to add that value to the key. So let's start solving this second function. Now this is little bit different from the first function and little bit trickier. From the structure, we can see that here also, after invoking the first function, it returns a function and that function has to be stored. Sorry, that function will accept the number of argument that has to be passed to the functions. Now it won't be 3, it can be on any limit, that's why I'm going to return again an anonymous function because I don't see a need of making a recursive call any further. So I'll accept all the arguments as an array. So we accepted all the arguments, uh, no matter what the count is, if the count is 3 or 4, if it is more than 3, so we'll pass these arguments as it is to the function and function as per the requirement, whatever argument it is accepting. It will take those number of arguments otherwise it will ignore the extra counts so we got the arguments the boilerplate is ready the first function accepts the object it returns another function now the other function that it has written will accept the number of arguments and then inside this function what we are going to do is we are going to iterate the object so let key in object now as you can see the structure we have nested keys I mean one object can have the nested values as well so and we have to check which key has a function as a value so let's get the value of each key so object key this will give me the value of the current key and I'll add a condition over here to check if type of val equals to function that means if the value is of function type then what we have to do is we have to update the current key with the value processed value or the final result of the function so this function will pass the arguments now here this three operator three dot operator work as a spread operator so they it will spread the array values as a parameter or arguments to the value function or the function that the current key holds so for the function if the current key is a function we are going to uh, compute the functions value and then we are going to reassign it to the current key with the computed value otherwise what we are going to do is object dot key we are going to recursively call the parent function and to that we will pass the current value so let's say we are at a and because a's value is an object it's not a function so we are going to recursively pass this object to the pipe so that it can do the computing and do the checking so we are going to pass the value and then the same arguments sorry pipe returns a value so that's why we are going to spread in the following call so pipe accepts a value or the nested object and then because pipe returns a function that accepts the arguments so we pass the same arguments back to that and this will do the nested computation recursively it will call the same function again the same iteration will happen and it will check if the key holds a uh, uh, function or anything else and depending upon that it will do the processing and return the result finally once the computing is done we are going to return the original object because 
we are making a recursive call to the parent function so this parent function returns a function and that function should return a value that should be assigned to this key that's why we are returning the original object whichever the function has received as argument so that its value will be assigned to that current key i think this should work let me click on run so see we got the function a b in the b it accepts three value and returns the sum of three so we get three as output for c we are getting a plus b minus c that is two minus one that is one we are getting the value and finally for d because we are subtracting everything we are getting minus one let's say if i have another value over here e is true so this will be untouched because this is not a function so we should return we should get e as true as it is so see we got e as true as it is so our function is working perfectly fine i hope you have learned something new today thank you for your time